421. Um, guys, I sent you guys the PowerPoint. I'm going to be sending you guys that PowerPoint for every chapter. Okay? That PowerPoint is the PowerPoint that comes with the book. I'll be sending it to you guys. Um, unfortunately, that PowerPoint is kind of vague, right? I don't know if, if is anybody checked it out. If you look at that PowerPoint, it's super vague, which is why, you know, I came in not ready to go on Wednesday. All right, so you know me, I'm gonna go and make my own my own PowerPoint, my own slides. I suggest you guys take notes. You know, I tried to break this chapter down as simple as I could for you guys. As simple as I could for you. So uh, definitely get your pen, paper out, and take some notes, guys. And uh, like I said, we're on page 421. I don't know this one. Mm -hmm. I don't know this one. How was playing yesterday? Kind of good. We get an image. Mr. Seal got us some uh, some images. We get images. I got to see uh, swallow test with X-ray. Who? Swallow test. Oh, like a uh, bear, bear, uh, what's it called? Enema. Swallow, bear, yeah. swallow. Yeah, it's cool. Not enema. Not enema. Now they have put the bladder in the abdomen. Oh, you get that bladder. Yeah, you get that prostate. Yeah. You get that prostate. Guys, oh, practice, I got a too. practice on your prostate before you get it, right? Because if you get, you're going to get abdomens all the time. So try to get a really nice prostate because um, I'm really harsh on those grades. It has to be perfect because it's only six images, right? Yeah. You know, nobody should make less than an A on that actual count, on, honestly. I right? thought it was nice. But definitely so practice. So, like, don't forget, come, let, let me see your images as well. I want to see. It's got blurry. I want to see. Yeah. Then I don't want to see that, Julie. I don't want to say I want it. Yeah, I want the, the HD definition. Yeah, I want, I, want, I want high quality images. But y'all keep working on those comps. Turn them in early if you have them, guys. Don't wait until the end of the semester. Turn those comps in early. Turn those comps in early. Pat, you can hit the light for us. Guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to start with that deal with you. I, I went and got the light, the lamp from the, um, from the uh, lab. It's still kind of dark in here, though, right? But, um... <coughs> If you guys stay up, then we can keep the light on. If, unless you guys want it on so you can write. It's fine. It's fine. Right. We, we can bring Moment you guys fall asleep, light coming on. Light coming on. All right. So, guys, keep me in check. Keep me in check on your, on your check-off list. You know, I'm sure I have everything on this list, but you guys keep me in check. Or keep yourself in check so you will know. You don't, have, you don't have to get it right now. Just make sure we cover everything that's on this list right here. This, this is the requirement for the NEC that I have to teach. Again, I tried to break it down as simple as that possible. As simple as I could. All right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so, again, guys, we're on chapter, uh, what's this? This 15? 15, 15, 15 in this yeah, book? Because I'm kind of using both books, guys. I'm kind of using both the Hagen Answer and this book. I'm taking all of the numbers from this book, but I'm using, I'm kind of combining them because um, as I'm reading this book, this book is not the very, it's not the easiest read, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys, this is your book, so it's not the easiest read. Hagen Answer, to me, organizes a little bit better. So I'm kind of using both those things, okay? So we're gonna talk about um, thyroid, parathyroid glands, and neck, okay? So, guys, uh, of course, ultrasound uh, gives us, is important for screening assessment of the thyroid gland, the parathyroid glands, as well as soft tissues of the neck. The parathyroid glands, again, guys, they're very, very hard to see on ultrasound. You probably will not see them unless something is wrong with them. Okay, you can you can try, but their their um, echogenicity is so similar to the uh, thyroid itself that it's, it'll be really difficult to see it. But you will see it like on the posterior end, like somewhere up in here, that posterior border of the actual thyroid, if you're looking for parathyroid glands. Of course, you would have, have to do that with reason. You wouldn't just go blindly looking for parathyroid glands, because again, we, if you read your book, you will see that it's very, very, very difficult to see them. You almost never see them, okay? So, um, and then also, we also use ultrasound to evaluate the thyroid, parathyroid, and neck um, structures, such as an IR, or like I told you guys at my new job, F and A to find you aspirations when you're doing a biopsy on a thyroid. So what they're doing is they're gonna take a like a, a small needle, maybe take maybe five of them. I know at, at um, my job right now we use five needles 
to get these um, FNAs. And so what, what we'll do is we'll go in there, the doctor will insert some um, lidocaine to numb the area, but it looks, it looks really, really brutal. It looks really, really brutal because they'll take the needle and they'll just be sticking, 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 so they, so they can get a nice, um, you know, a nice sample of tissue so they can send it to the lab. And they'll do that multiple times, like five times at uh, St. Louis and Sugar. Okay. So, of course, the patient doesn't feel that, but with you causing that kind of trauma to the neck and to the body, it can possibly lead to a hematoma. So, we kind of keep the patient there for a second. Okay. But that's something uh, ultrasound, ultrasound, you'll see it, it guides a lot of things, but you know the difference between a needle, um, which is metal and soft tissue, we're going to be, because they have a, a nice um, a impedance difference, we're going to be able to see them very well, right? We're going to get a lot of reflections, right? Because of that impedance difference. So that's why ultrasound is guided, because we're able to see the needle very well um, with ultrasound, during that FNA, with that fine needle aspiration biopsy. And also, um, ultrasound guides percutaneous alcohol ablation for adenomas of the parathyroid gland. Of course, you need to um, have some kind of, you know, enlargement, or that's what adenoma is, of the thyroid, parathyroid gland. Okay? So it helps them inject that alcohol or whatever to kind of cause them to atrophy or get smaller. Okay. So, no, you guys don't have this PowerPoint. I just made this last night. Okay. So, I think it's all right. <laughs> All right, so the thyroid, guys, it is the largest endocrine gland in the body and functions to control the basal me metabolic rate. So that's the number one job of the thyroid is to control your metabolism, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the difference between the endocrine and exocrine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you guys, what, what's, what's, what a gland is both? Hmm? Isn't it the pancreas? Endocrine. Isn't it the pancreas? Yeah. The endocrine and exocrine. So endocrine meaning that it takes it takes hormones straight to the blood system, right? And um, exocrine meaning it takes hormones through ducts to the body, okay, to organs. All right. So it also is the site of synthesis, storage, and secretion of thyroid hormones. Okay. Thyroid secretes three hormones. We're gonna talk about those hormones in a little bit when we get to um, laboratory values. High frequency transducers must be used to enter the thyroid because um, it's a superficial structure, of course, and also, um, you know, high frequency uh, has superior de image detail. So we're gonna, we wanna be able to see those subtle differences in gray shade whenever we're doing a thyroid ultrasound, all right? So its greatest clinical value is confirming mass location, um, difference, differentiating between cystic and solid lesions, Okay. Cystic being anechoic, solid lesions being having some sort of echogenicity to them. Okay. And imaging biopsy during FNA. Okay. So the thyroid is subject to many different kind of malformations and the sonographic appearance, we're gonna talk about those in a little bit. Okay. Well, Ms. Shepard's probably gonna talk about those more because she's doing the actual pathology part of this class. Okay. So let's talk about embryology, guys. So I kind of broke it down every single <coughs> every single um, kind of sub subsection uh, like this. So, embryology from a congenital. So, the thyroid emerges between the fourth and fifth weeks of gestation from the primitive, uh, uh, from the, it's the first endocrine glandular structure to appear in the embryo. Okay. So everything I have in blue, guys, that's very, very important, right? Remember I said, if it says the first most common, um, you know, uh, anything significant, I'm gonna highlight that in blue for you, all right? So, it develops from the invagination of the floor of the primitive pharynx. So the primitive pharynx is gonna fold on itself and it's gonna create like a little pouch, okay? And that's at the same location at the base of the tongue in the, uh, the neck. I have, a, I have an image of what that looks like on the next slide. Oh, two slides now. So, at five weeks gestation, the gland will migrate inferiorly along the anterior neck region and anterior to the trachea, because we know it sits anterior to the trachea, right? Okay. That journey from when it goes from the primitive uh, primitive pharynx all the way down to the anterior, the lower neck, that is gonna be called that, that's gonna be called the thyroglossal tract, the thyroglossal, thyroglossal duct, okay? That thyroglossal duct, it should solidify, but 
some and, and atrophy, but sometimes it doesn't and it can develop into a cyst. And so hyperglossal duct cyst is the most common congenital um, cyst occurring in the neck. Common material, common cyst? Yeah, it's the most common congenital cyst that occurs in the neck. Oh. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more. I'm just kind of giving you a little background on it. Okay, so again, the thyroid, about the, about the fourth or fifth weeks, fourth or fifth week, is gonna develop from the primitive floor, the pharynx, it's gonna fold on itself, and create a little pouch in which the thyroid is gonna be formed, okay? Then later on, about five weeks, that thyroid is gonna travel inferior down to the lower part of the neck, okay? And that, that tract that it, that it travels is called a thyroglossal duct or thyroglossal tract, okay? And then that tract, the actual tract, like a tunnel, it should solidify an atrophy, but if it doesn't, sometimes it can turn into cysts or a cyst. So you said by the fifth week you start developing? Right, mm -hmm. right. It's the earliest uh, endocrine gland to develop an embryo. Guys, please uh, ask questions. All right. So, here's my image right here. So finally, at seven weeks of gestation, the thyroid is gonna divide into two lobes connected by the isthmus. Thyroid cartilage is formed in front of the trachea and cartilage is fully developed by the end of the first trimester. So your thyroid is completely developed by <coughs> the end of the first trimester, okay? So here's what we're talking about here, guys. So here on image one, this right here, guys, will be where the tongue would be right here. This is the primitive pharynx right here. So this primitive pharynx, you can see on image two, it kind of folds on itself and creates this little, little tunnel right here. That's the thyroglossal duct, okay? And this is the actual thyroid traveling inferior. You see it traveling down early, to, early in the fifth week. By the late fifth week, the thyroid gland is formed. Still, this whole little tract right here, that's the thyroglossal duct. You see it right there? Mm -hmm. Thyroglossal duct, okay? Mm -hmm. this, this whole tract should solidify, it should get hard and atrophy. It should just kind of um, get smaller, okay? Sometimes it doesn't and it can form a cyst. So right here, I don't have an image of a cyst right here, but you can see the thyroid gland formed right here. You see the thyroid, this is the trachea right here, guys. Esophagus right behind it. See it right there? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the trachea. And this, this here little bone in yellow, that's the hyoid bone. That bone allows you to move your tongue um, in various positions, okay? So any questions on embryology of the thyroid? So good, can somebody uh, explain to me? What happened? How does it, how does the thyroid form? When? How's the thyroid form? Somebody help out. From the primitive, is it primitive pharynx? From the primitive pharynx. It's yes. gonna fold on itself. Then move down. Move down. Then okay. to the thyroglossal duct. Through the thyroglossal duct. And if it doesn't uh, form well, it'll turn into a cyst. Okay, okay. And it should be completed by the seventh, the seventh week's gestation. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, okay, team. No, we're a team in here. We're a team. That's all of us. All right. So that is the embryology. That's how the thyroid is formed. Okay. So we're good on that. Moving on. Anatomy, guys. Anatomy. So talk about some thyroid anatomy. So the thyroid is located inferior to the thyroid cartilage. Everybody has thyroid cartilage because it's that prominent part of your neck. More prominent in men, but it's that prominent part of your neck. That's that's your thyroid cartilage. The thyroid is actually inferior to that at the base of the neck, okay? At the base of the neck. So thyroid cartilage, also known as the Adam's apple, okay? The entire thyroid is uh, surrounded by a fibrous capsule. I'll show you that on the next slide. And it consists of um, right and left lobes that are connected by um, a bridge or the isthmus, okay? The isthmus, I think the definition of isthmus is a bridge, I believe, in the in Western. So the thyroid has an H or U configuration as it wraps around the C-shaped um, um, trachea, okay? So here it is, you can see it has kind of an H appearance, right? So depending on where that isthmus kind of lays, it can have shape, be shaped like a U, or shape, or you know how we, how we look at it in lab, it's kind of shaped like a U sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So, or it can be shaped like an H, okay? The isthmus straddles the trachea anteriorly 
and the parent lobes extend to either side of the trachea. It just kind of wraps around that trachea, anterior to that trachea, all right? It goes our trachea right here, our thyroid uh, isthmus right here that connects our right and left lobes of the thyroid, thyroid cartilage right superior to that. Again, guys, um, feel for that thyroid cartilage, palpate that thyroid cartilage when you're doing the exam, because like I said, it's so easy. Sometimes those, you know, some people like really big, they have that, they don't have like a definitive neck. Like you can see the difference. It's just kind of, it kind of it hangs sometimes, right? So sometimes you'll be scanning way up here. Like I said, like I showed you in lab the other day, you're actually <coughs> imaging the um, submandibular gland and you really need to go inferior to look at that thyroid. I, it, it may sound like, like, hey, like I won't make that mistake, but man, like I, you, you can make that mistake very easily because it looks very similar. So also um, you wanna do a really good history on your patient as well, because sometimes they order a thyroid, but they may be there for a submandibular gland.